All right, welcome back to another screencast. I'm going to cover Firebase. There's more Firebase, of course, and we're going to cover data modeling. Data modeling is one of the critical parts of Firebase. If you don't model your data correctly, there's, you don't have a chance. Uh, you'll run into performance bottlenecks pretty quickly, and your life's just going to be miserable, especially security rules. That's, that's terrible. But what I'd like to cover right now is data nesting. So one of the keys to Firebase is keeping your data as shallow as possible. You don't want deeply nested data. Okay, so for example, right now, I have a little script running. I've got Nodamon running in my terminal. So every time I run, every time I change anything, it'll rerun it. And here I've got data that I'm pulling from Swappy, the Star Wars API. Okay, so I'm pulling in 10 users and all their data. Luke Skywalker, got him there. We got C3PO there. We got 10 users. Okay. All right. So, 10 users. Now let's... Let's go ahead and let's pull the home world and nest the home world. Because right now we don't have a whole lot of nesting, but we want to nest that. Let's, we want that home world data. So we're going to add that in. Okay. So instead of just user ref dot set, we're going to say, hmm, let's see, return axios dot get user dot home world plus format equals JSON. Okay. And function res uh, home world equals res dot data. Okay. And now actually you know what? Let's just say user dot home world equals res dot data. Return that. dot then function user okay user ref dot set user okay that should be fine let's save that and see what happens all right we've got our data let's see did we have an error Ooh, we saved the home world data to the top level. Okay, so we got a problem here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we want to return the whole user. All right, save that. There we go, we got a user and we've got their home world all nested. Okay, so now if we go to query, so let's let's get rid of this, let's get rid of the save portion. Now we got the data this way. Let's get rid of that. Just comment that all out. And we're gonna say, we're gonna listen to users ref dot once value. Wait, no, let's do on child added function snap console.log snap.val okay save so what do we have reading out down here below we've got the entire object every single time including all of this nested homeworld data now let's say i'm just interested in the name Let's say I want to loop through all the names of this user. I can't just loop through all the names. I'm going to get all the data for every user every time I pull it. I just pulled the top level users ref right here and I got everything. Now that's a, that's a problem. We don't want this. This is nested data. And yeah, uh, Firebase can nest something like 32 levels deep, but it really impacts your performance. So let's get rid of that and let's just refactor this quickly to do a little better job of that. Okay, so now instead of just, we got our, okay, we got our, our user ref right here. So instead of just saving the whole user, let's do um, return 
Ooh, let's do another one. Instead of users ref, let's do var users um, home worlds ref equals ref dot child user readable. I'm gonna so I'm gonna nest it all into user readable because user user readable uh, works really well with our with our security rules. We can just have a whole group, a whole node, a whole section of our data be user readable, but not but not writable. Um, okay, so we're gonna do that and then home world. All right, home worlds. Let's make it plural. Okay, whatever. Uh, home worlds ref. So right here we're gonna say home worlds ref dot child user ref because you see we got a user ref up above right here so we don't we can pull the key right off of that because we made the user ref separately user ref dot key okay so now we got that child so it'll be slash slash user readable slash home world slash whatever the user key is so in this case like K L U R okay and we're gonna set that We're gonna set that uh, to res that data. Okay. And now we have to break this out, do another promise. So now we may as well just put the user ref that set user right here. Okay. Let's see what happens when we do this. Save this sucker. All right, deleted. All right. Uh oh. Users ref dot key. We wanted user ref dot key. See it less listed under user. That just messed everything up. We don't want the users ref. We want the user ref right there, because that's the unique one. All right. So now. Let's let's collapse this and look at this a little easier. Okay, so we've got this one user here. Let's the one ending in D4P. That's Luke Skywalker. He ends in D4P. Homeworlds. D4P. Look at that. Tatooine. So now if we want to query the data, let's comment all this out again. Um, let's say we want to get the user's ref. So we're gonna say users ref dot on child added function snap console lot log okay well okay we already know that this will just log out the user itself so let's skip that that demonstration and then say okay now we have we have the snap dot key so now we're going to do homeworlds ref dot child snap dot key all right dot once value because we're just going to get it once dot then another snap maybe we should call this user snap and homeworld snap so now we get our homeworld we can say console.log the homeworld snap.val okay so down here in the terminal come on friends let's do this we got this oh didn't like that didn't like the snap right 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 user snap okay so now we got the home world. We've also got the user as well. Okay, somehow I de deleted that. That was unfortunate. Okay, but it takes two steps now to get our home world. The plus side is we can now loop through our users and they're much, much more shallow. Um, in fact, I would break out films, species, starships, vehicles, everything into different, different nodes underneath user readable. Uh, if I were interested in actually housing that data. And I would get the user down to just the details. That lets me loop through lots of users very quickly and efficiently. Okay. 
So quick recap, keep your data structures really, really shallow. Um, Firebase is all about streams. It's all about a, a lot, long lists of shallow data that you handle in small chunks from the bottom up. Okay, so let's cover ways to, to handle that data in a stream. So now for example, let's say instead of, instead of all this stuff, Let's, instead of users ref and home worlds ref, we're gonna just comment all this out. We're gonna start back up a data modeling again. Okay. And we're going to, let's say uh, var messages equals ref dot child messages. Okay. Set interval. Okay, so every two seconds, we're gonna say messages.push. Um, let's just push down some text, something arbitrary. And just so we can see the order, we'll say um, updated or date new date dot to string okay so every time every two seconds we're going to create a message okay let's save this oh pfft. yeah that's not gonna work So let's let's just look at these messages. All right, we got these messages. You see, they're 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 multiplying. They're multiplying pretty quickly. Let's just let this run for a little bit. Pretend we got an app with lots of people chatting. Now let's say in, in addition to just this, we want to read the messages. We want to actually read them out to our user. So at some point we're gonna have to say messages ref dot. Uh, let's try on value function snap console logout value snap dot val. Okay. All right. Let's save that. Woo! Didn't like that one little bit. Messages ref. Uh, <laughs> I should probably call this messages ref. That's a much better way to to do this. Okay. Messages ref. All right. So you'll notice every ten, every two seconds, this is going to go again. It's just going to keep going. This value event fires every single time you change anything. It's for keeping full data structures in sync. This is lame. Now let's do child added. Let's do child added instead. This is great. Now we got our child added. There we go. Child added will fire once for every every one of these guys. And in this case, you see it's it's working sequentially, which is really cool. Now, what we really want is we want to be now let's say we had let's say we let this run for like an hour or two hours, right? We'd have who knows, a lot, right? I'm not gonna do the math in my head. Let's say we had thousands upon thousands of these. We wouldn't want to fire this off thousands upon thousands of times. Um, that's treating your data not as a stream, but as a, as a full data set. You're treating all the data at once. We want to treat little chunks of data. So we're going to say messages ref dot, we have to have an order by. Right now we're not ordering. It'll naturally order by the key, but we want to actually order it. We want, we want to do a limit query. So we're going to have to say order by key, order by key, okay, dot limit to last. Um, let's say limit to last one. Okay, limit to last one. Oh, there it went. So you see how it read off the one that existed first, and then it just so it read off the very last one, and then it read off. Then it's continuing to read off the incrementals. Let's say what happens if we say limit to last five or fifteen or whatever. That's fine. 
there. So it reads 15 out, and then it will continue to read out every two seconds the new ones that are getting added on. Okay, so the key to this is use the limit queries. Don't read all your data all the time. Now you can stash the data and you can say, you can walk back up these trees and say, hey, end at, say end at this, this guy right here. So example, if I just ended at this, this key, so limit to last, limit to last dot end, oh, come on, dot end at, there we go. All right, so it read out 15 and you don't see it reading out anymore. So I actually, I walked up the tree a little bit and by walking up the tree, I kind of froze my result set. Um, so the idea is as you, as your user navigates up and down the tree, you're going to be redoing this, this listener. You're going to be breaking the listener down, uh, calling off on it, and you're going to be, uh, redoing the ref with different end at, end at values. Um, or you can just limit to last and just tack on to the local data structure. Okay. So that is, uh, that's all I got for you right now. Thanks for listening. I'll be back.